From the basement of the Hophead's Guide to the Galaxy World Headquarters located in northern Colorado, this is the Hophead's Guide Podcast. I'm Matt Reber. I'm Brown Jake. On this episode, we talk about what beer goes with those holiday dishes, and we tell you why Santa prefers a milk and cookie stout over the real thing. Hey there, Hopheads and Beer Geeks. Welcome to another episode of the Hopheads Guide Podcast brought to you by Beards by Nick. With me, as always, is the man who puts salsa on his mashed potatoes, Jake the Brown Guy. It's green chili on my mashed potatoes, not salsa. I, I knew you were going to say that. I just salsa goes feeling. on the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Spice it up. I knew you were going to say that. Somehow I knew he was gonna. you were going to bring green chili into it. <laughs> It's it is a thing we talked about this last year. It's just uh, tradition, Jones. Uh, that <laughs> you know, uh, for my family, we always make green chili to smother all over whatever we're eating for the holidays. I'm glad you said whatever you were eating because that, that my mind immediately went like the wrong direction. <laughs> like we smothered all over everything: <laughs> presents, the tree, <laughs> Christmas lights, ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a slip and slide outside. <laughs> Everybody loves a good green chili bath. Oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's the holiday season officially. Uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're getting into Thanksgiving, and uh, that kind of makes it the holiday season. Oh, yeah. So it's, uh, it's fun if you're one of those fun, festive type people. I, I noticed, like, the brewery can start getting a little over uh, filled up uh, during the holidays. Um, you get a lot of people traveling like today I went over to Adele's and I was just trying to get in there to get a crowler and get out. Yeah. And I had four different families in front of me that could not figure out what they wanted to drink. <laughs> it's like, okay, I understand you haven't been here. This is awesome. Oh, look, a brewery. I'm from such a small town that's more than Fort Collins. And... I'm just trying to get a crowler and go, man. Like, I wish they just had like a to go line for Odell's. Yeah, um, I think all breweries this time of year probably should have like a separate line for to go. <laughs> Our locals, are you from here? Yeah. Have you been here a before? Locals, locals <laughs> only line. <laughs> this line. If you have not been here before, there's your line of the 800 people that are waiting to get a beer. <laughs> now, I, I just kind of felt that. Like, I I walked in and I, I love it because it is something like. When my, you know, when your parents visit and when my, when my mom and dad used to come up, my dad, me and my dad would run to a couple breweries. Right. And it was calling it always during the holidays while my, you know, wife and my mom went shopping. So, um, and I think we did that one year when Charlotte was, I think she was just barely over a year old. Um, I met you for a beer at Odell's and, yeah. um, Nikki was out shopping. Uh, so, um, it's just kind of one of those holiday things, but I can see that it is kind of a, uh, a pain in the ass kind of thing, you know, like more people at the brewery when like on a Tuesday at three o'clock, there's, you know, maybe 15 people at Odell's today. It was like 75. So, well, yeah, everybody's off work. It's the, you know, it's the week of Thanksgiving. So everybody's off and, you know, there is no such thing as black Friday anymore because everybody starts their black Friday sales on, you know, Tuesday or Monday (laughs) now. So uh, last week, <laughs> people are out shopping still, and you know it's it's ridiculous. This that's kind of the part of the holiday season that I don't I don't like is the like the madness around the shopping and oh, what am I gonna get this person or what am I gonna buy for so and so? You know, it's like uh, yeah. everybody gets the same thing. You uh, they get coasters or a t shirt. From a brewery. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna say from you. It's like Matt I already have eight Hop It's Guide podcast shirts. Oh, I've done that too. Everybody gets Hop It's Guide to the Galaxy merchandise. You know? <laughs> we here's got, a here's a pop and stop. We got oh, hats this year. We got vinyl stickers this year. <laughs> <laughs> totally different from last year. Thanks, Matt. I'll put it next to my sticker from the Hophead's Guide that's on my beer fridge. You'll have a whole flight of Hophead's Guide stickers. <laughs> Yellow, green, blue. You're welcome. <laughs> No, but yeah, as you said, like today, um, I just tried to run and I thought uh, two o'clock on a Tuesday, I understand it's before Thanksgiving, uh, 
But I went to Costco just thinking I could run in, run out. That was stupid. Oh, hell no. <laughs> like, the First of all, there's no running in and running out of Costco ever. I know. And but sometimes I've done it. I've done it one time that I've actually been able to get in and out of Costco. In 15 yeah, but that minutes. was when you were robbing the place. That's different. Well, that was their fault for not having anybody <laughs> else there, and they had an open and they had no money, so that was my fault for going there then. So, um, but it was kind of just I should have known that I should have just passed and not went in um, when I could not find a parking spot and I had to park way back by the fast food restaurant <laughs> almost in their parking lot oh wow it, to just go to costco and i was just like oh no i'm still just running in running out i had this thing in my mind i knew where i was going i know what i was gonna find and i went in there and of course what i was trying to look for they moved <laughs> <laughs> yes so, so if you a, haven't been in costco in the last month everything is in a oh, different yeah, place yeah, from so the last had, time you went i had to flag somebody down ask him where I was that and of course the guy flagged down and he goes oh yeah it's right here <laughs> at the front of the store <laughs> that I walked by to go to the back of the store where, where it was at before. It was be, yeah. Yeah. So, man, I, you, you got to try, but it's it's one of those things. Yeah, just you wish that they would serve. Actually, it'd be kind of cool if Macy's for the long lines would serve craft beer. Right, I'd probably shop more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come here, have a couple tasters, get somebody to sponsor like New Belgium, and hey, while you're waiting in line, try New Belgium's new. Oak aged, whatever they just released, is and and you know that'd be awesome. I'd probably shop more. <laughs> yeah, you definitely would shop more because you'd be like, you know what? I just remembered I gotta go back and get some Doritos. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Maybe I'm gonna turn right around and then be right. wait. Didn't I already give you a sample? No. What are you talking about? <laughs> you went to uh, you went back to Pueblo last weekend. How yep. was that? We went and dropped the kids off for the week. Um, so I have a kids free week until Thanksgiving. Uh, but uh, since we took them down the weekend before Thanksgiving, I actually went to uh, Big Beer Brewfest, um, which is uh, should be named Bud Light Beer Fest. <laughs> I think uh, uh, our listeners have probably heard you talk about Bud Light Beer Fest before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was actually amazed this year. Uh, we did the early entry. And uh, for those people that you, if you ever want to come to a Colorado Beer Festival and go to one that you could actually try every beer and not have to worry about lines... This is the one to go to. I mean, you're going to get, yes, the the tent area where you're going to have every uh, AB-owned brewery, um, except for Wicked Weed. They weren't there. But I felt bad for Tommy Knocker because they were stuck in the row of AB-owned breweries. Oh, so, yeah. Um, but, I mean, you had a, good, a lot of good San Luis Valley Brewing Company was there, brews. Um I mean, it was a good mixture. The It's well worth the $60 to do the 45-minute VIP because they actually give you a little bit, way more than, than the $45 regular ticket. So you get in there, obviously, 45 minutes early, um, and they lead you in this little room. Well, you're supposed to be able to, you have this little VIP room you can try beers at, and everybody goes in there of the VIPs and tries beer. But you could go in there at any point and have the beer. So me and my buddy just zoomed right out to the festival. Oh, yeah. And we're like one of maybe eight people in the festival for the first for like 45 minutes. Nice. Just going out and trying beer and talking to people. Um, so that was I was really fun. I thought, man, this is when the VIP part really pays off. And then once the regular doors open, we bopped into the VIP area. Um, one of their key gems that they had this year was uh, Pliny the Elder. They had a keg of it. So got to sip on some of that. Um, they had last year's uh, Bourbon County. Last year they had this year's Bourbon, you know, that year's Bourbon County. So right. I was like, hey, man, what about 2018? She's like, oh, we still have 2017 left. I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw it at the liquor store, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so there was some, uh, the VIP wasn't like too top notch. There was some beers that they were pouring from Bells in VIP and the same beer that they were pouring from Bells in the festival. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it at least something, like, really limited or no, good that no. you could, you know, if they ran out? like No, no. It wasn't something. I was like, wait, I just saw that out in the festival. And he's like, yeah, they just really want us to push bells. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, so I just went on. They had 1050, 1050 barrel age, so I grabbed me a little bit of that. Huh. Um, a lot of different sours and stuff like that from uh, New Belgium, so kind of skipped over those and kicked the guys in the nuts that was pouring them. <laughs> um, so the VIP area, like the beer choices, were not as top notch as last year, um, but they did have uh, you know Pliny 
And then the festival itself was, uh, I, I think it's one of those festivals. It does say it's a brew fest, but they have a wine room. Um, and they have li- uh, li- liquors there. Oh, right, so they're, right on. You know, scotches, vodkas, bourbons. Um, Breckenridge was there. Um, they had they were serving up some of their different uh, vodkas that they're coming out with, um, and a couple local distilleries were there. So, and then they were offering food. Uh, they had a little area you could go eat at, um, and they had food trucks there. But the people ran to the food truck and got your food, so you didn't have to go outside to the food truck. Either. Oh, so okay. you went in a little room, and they had the little table set up. Uh, but all of them were all local. Uh, Pueblo businesses that were, you know, f- local food trucks instead of, you know, they're doing it at the Marriott. So they could right. easily had Marriott cater to the thing and have them do everything. But it was nice to have actual food trucks there. So yeah. I, I, it was a good time. Right on, man. Well, it looked like they had a pretty good setup based on the picture you sent me. Like, you know, being in the in the hotel and that like ballroom area, it looked like they had at least a pretty decent setup where yeah. there was plenty of room. And like you said, based on the picture you sent me, didn't look like there was a whole lot of whole lot of uh, competition for the beer. Well, what we what I've talked to my buddy about is they do two sh- sessions. They do a, a day session and a night session. The night session is always jam packed, and that's where they're going to take most of their pictures at for the um, publicity for the posters for next year. Yeah, because they, they said it's. Um, and talking to one of the guys, he goes, "Yeah, the day session is like." The day session at GABF, you have your serious beer drinkers. They are asking what kind of hops and what kind of malt and all that stuff that you're putting in the beer. It was at night. They don't care. They just want to drink it so they could go. Or they're, are getting, they get, they're getting their money out of their ticket. Yep. Are they are they get pissed off you didn't fill up their glass? Because there is like they give you a, probably a four ounce glass and there's no line on it. So brewers will be like, "What do you want me to do? Do you want me to top it off? Do you want a just a little splash?" Right. And I'll be like, oh, I've had this before. Just give me about half because I'm going to go try. You know, I'm waiting to go back over here to try this. Or, hey, no, fill it up. I want to take my time so I can walk around. Yeah. So it it's kind of cool. But, yeah, he says that at night it's just pretty much you fill everybody's glass up because that's what they want. And you just see him turn around, try two drinks of it, and then slam the rest and go to the next brewery. <laughs> yep, that's beer. I'm yeah. drinking it. Yeah. And I was like, man, this got to be tough with the distilleries. He goes, yeah, because they're giving, like, little shooters. That they're serving stuff at them? Yeah, out of but, like little thimble-sized cups, basically. Yeah, but like they're not counting who had what. So you could go and go there, because I went and got like a Breckenridge um, bourbon right before we went in. Went around, I'm like, oh, I wonder if I could go back and get another one. So I was like, hey, can I get another one? She's like, sure. I was like, oh, well, man, someone could get really jacked up right? if they're not paying attention. And then if you go into the wine room, there was a whole bunch of different wines in there. Yeah, because when we... um. When we went to uh, when they had used to have South Denver Beer Festival, and they had that VIP area that yeah. had liquor, you had little tabs on your bracelet that each time you got an alcoholic or or, or a booze drink, they would tear a tab so that they could keep track of how many booze drinks you had had, essentially. Which I thought that was a good idea because it at least kept people in check. Yeah. Sounds to me like that would be a free-for-all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a local um, Pueblo distillery there. I got his card, accidentally forgot it. But he made three different kind. He made moonshine, he made a cinnamon moonshine, and then he made a apple pie whiskey. And he made me drink each and every one of those. And then he gave me the he apple pie. He made you yeah. drink it? Because I was like, like I just really <laughs> want to try the apple pie. And he goes, oh, but if you haven't had our moonshine, you got to try the moonshine first. I'm like, okay. And he goes, do you like fireballs? Like, eh, sometimes. He's like, oh, but you got to try this. And so they are going for cheap. Like, they put their stuff in plastic bottles. Oh, really? Yeah. So he's like, oh, yeah, this count, call, you know, this costs like 20 bucks at Big Bear. And I'm like, oh, so you guys are going. He's like, yeah, you know, distilling is, if you do it right and you mix the right ingredients, you're gonna, you can make cheap liquor. We are the malt liquor of the liquor industry. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. But he, I mean, he's like, here, and then I'll try this one. And he's like, well, they'll go back to the moonshine. I'm like, hey, man, no, I came here to drink beer, right. not get hammered off of liquor. And I mean, it's maybe a half of ounce shots, but they'll add up. Like any at any beer festivals, you know, your four ounce glass just adds up over time. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Well, it sounds like they at least made some improvements over last year. Yes. Um, Bootstrap was there. The owner was there. Right on. Um, he was releasing, pre-releasing his hazy IPA um, that he's not planning on releasing t- until February. Wow. 
So that's pretty big for a <laughs> little beer festival in Pueblo, Colorado. I'm like, yeah, you're marketing to the wrong people. You know that? <laughs> He's like, well, you're here. I was like, yeah, because my parents live here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but he actually knew who I was from when we went there to return um, or to get my six pack because that can ripped off. Oh, yeah. He was like, yeah, you're the dick to return the cans. Yeah. He's like, did you get any more cans? I didn't want to say, well, I haven't bought any more of your beer. So, But I was like, oh, no, you know, every six pack's been good. He's like, yeah, actually, we're still running into that problem. We still haven't fixed it. I was like, oh, well, you probably should get into fixing that. You right. Know? Yeah. I, and maybe not admit it because... Now I'm going to go talk about it on my podcast. I know. I'm going to go rip off cans until I found one that rips totally off. I'm definitely going to go buy some of your beer now so that I can get free beer. I'm going to buy more of your beer to get free beer. That doesn't make any sense. Um, but today I got went to brewery number 24 of the year. What? Yep. The Red Truck Brewing Company. Those silly Canadians that come down to Fort Collins, Colorado and think they could sell beer. <laughs> but from what I hear, they're selling a lot of freaking beer out of that place. It, well, see, when I went in there, they weren't that busy. All there right. were maybe five people in there. Well, everybody was at Odell's. Oh, well, I know. Yeah, yeah. that's a, nobody caught in wind yet of like, hey, there's another brewery down here. Yeah. Um, I love what they did to the place. What they did to the old Fort Collins Brewery. Yeah. How they changed the restaurant around and made it really open. And the fire pits outside. And I, I was like, man, this is actually really, really nice. I wish the beer was a little bit better. Because <laughs> it would make me want to go back and actually sit outside and... Sit by the fire pit. I did a, just a four sample. Um, uh, I did the Red Col- uh, the red Pilsner, the Mexican Lager, the Northwest IPA, and then their Hazy IPA. Um, and they did have a lot, a lot of beer on tap. Yeah. But their Red Pilsner almost felt like, I don't know what they were going for, but it felt like it was neither of either beer. Like, it was red, but... It didn't have any char- characteristics of a Pilsner. Yeah, so I had that beer at GABF. Okay. And I felt the exact same way. Yeah. I was just kind of like, oh, yep, that's the color. But other than that, I I really was not impressed with any of their beers. Yeah, um, their Mexican lager seemed too malty, where if you're making a Mexican lager, you should be using corn to actually give it that traditional Mexican lager feel. Sure. And I, I think that was it tasted me more like a brown because it didn't taste like it still had that no lager yeast. Mm-hmm. Um, the Northwest IPA could probably been hopped up a little bit. It sounded it felt almost like a pale ale, but um, they were going on track. They're going in the right direction. And same thing with the hazy. It just seemed like it was a session IPA and was a little weak. Um, didn't have really that juiciness bite to it. But yeah. I mean, that's the only four I tried. I actually tried um, their food. Their food was really good. Um, really great service. I mean, the guy was on top of it and kept asking, like, oh, what do you think of that? And how are you liking the food? Can I get you any, you know? And even though there was four of us at the bar, but I think he was taking care of another table, but he was still constantly checking back on it, on me. So it was kind of cool. So Yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, at least the service is good and the food is good. Gives you a reason to go there even if, the beer is an excellent, I guess. Yeah, I'm waiting for that one person to go, well, have you had their blah, blah, blah? Yeah. And I'll probably go back and just try that one beer. And from what I've heard, the atmosphere is is cool. You know, like it's got a, it's got a nice, um, it's the theme to it is almost like a theme restaurant. Oh, yeah. So like when you yeah. go in. So you feel like you're kind of experiencing something different than you would anywhere else in Fort Collins. Well, yeah, because that's what how all restaurants look in Canada. <laughs> they, have, they have big red trucks <laughs> right at the front. <laughs> I would assume that they <laughs> would have, like, moose or... Everybody like, wears flannel. A guy on a horse. That would be kind of mounty. They yeah. should hire a mounty. That would be kind of funny. <laughs> that comes out and serves your beer to you outside. <laughs> I like it. I'm I'm on board with that idea. I would love that. I would freaking probably sit there outside all the time. On beer. <laughs> Have a Mountie bring you out beer. Yes. I'm in. Count me in. And you, what have you been up to? Uh, so last weekend, I, uh, I decided that, I, well, I got a little bored on Saturday. I was sitting around the house, I, and um, it, was a, it was a snow day. So, of course, I decided to drive to Denver while it was snowing. <laughs> uh Primarily because um, 
Cerebral was having their third anniversary party. They did the release early in the day. So by the time I got there at around like 2.30, 3 o'clock, the like heavy activity from the beer releases subsided a little bit. Okay. And um, they had a couple food trucks. They had huge um, heaters in the entire parking lot. So you could, even with the snow, you could hang out in the parking lot and still stay pretty warm. That's Although they got worried everybody about was crammed inside. Oh, like really? they had everybody, you know, there were a lot of people that were like, eh, we can get a couple more people in here, you know, no big deal. But I ventured outside and hung out by the heaters and was, was perfectly comfortable. So they, you know, they had at least like kind of expanded things a little bit to, to make room for more people. And um, really what I was trying to get was, uh, was the uh, beer to guard that they were releasing. Um, it's just a style of beer that I don't see a lot of breweries doing as special releases. Oh, yeah. And it's a style that I get excited about. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go see if I can get some. If I show up and they're sold out, well, then at least I get to experience the, the event. So. Sure. At least I'm at Cerebral. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Where I can get one of many various. Uh, different IPAs, and, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. And especially, like, if it's a, a brewery that's known for their IPAs and their stouts. Like, well, we drank the Trophy Hunt last yeah. year. That was phenomenal. And actually, recently, put my second bottle in the fridge. Ooh. I don't so know why. It's, it's made it to the shortlist seller. Yes. The short timer seller. I don't know why. Even though there's like, a million beers in there, it may take it another year. I don't remember <laughs> that it moved over there. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just somehow opened my fridge and go, huh, what do I want to drink today? What is this bottle? I'm like, trophy, huh? What the hell? I'm like, how the hell did this get in here? I'm like, well, now I don't want to put it back in my cellar because it went it's from already cellar. cold. It's yeah. already cold, yeah. but I don't want to pop it open tonight because it's 15 goddamn percent. <laughs> and there's <laughs> nobody around except for me. Well, I could probably drink it by myself. And I was like, you know what? I got to figure out a special occasion or if we do another bottle share, that might be. Yeah. Now that it's in the fridge, it's yeah. probably top on a bottle share list sitting right now. Well, we're talking about a December bottle share. Maybe while you and I are on our kind of winter hiatus, maybe doing a bottle share during that stretch of time. Yeah. Uh, Wade's been wanting, he's been nudging me about it. He actually wants to host. So. Oh, because he know. wants to show off Wade's Brewing Company? Yeah, he wants to show off his 27 tap. Uh, Keezer uh, Wade and, works, yeah. His Wade works, <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, I think that I think December is going to be a good time. If if Wade doesn't host it, I'm sure we can we can figure out another way to host it and uh, and still have some fun. Um, but anyway, back to the beer that I was talking about. Um, they they released a, a beer to guard, um, that I was I'm I was really excited about because it's um, again, it's a style that I don't really see a lot of. So it's called trembling giant and they aged it uh, 12 months on um, Oak with Brett. So it, you know, it's a little funky, but not sour. Okay. And, uh, and so I was pretty excited about it. Plus it's a style that I felt like would be good for like a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, yeah. So it was kind of leading into like, oh, it's the holidays. I think this would be a great beer. And it's only 7%, 6.9%, something like that. So it's a kind of a table, you know, level beer where it's not going to be kicking your ass. Yeah, you're not going to have one with turkey and be like, I'm so full and yeah. hammered at the same time. <laughs> exactly. And then the other one is called uh, Boss Fight. And that one is one that I... I'd like to share with you, but you're going to have to do only take a little sip because it is a milk stout. Oh, goddamn lactose. But it's a it's a um, 13.5% milk stout that they did in, excuse me, collaboration with Jay Wakefield. Okay. So I, mean, I have a feeling it's going to be really, really good. <laughs> a burpee? Just talking about just, it gives me the little, hiccups. Little burpees? Gives me the little burpees. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but, and I got to try... Um, I got to try the two beers that they released during GABF okay. uh, that I didn't get to try um, during the release of GABF, the Forever Awake and um, the Barrel Age Safe Word. 
How are those? Which I got, so I got the very last pour of Barrel Age Safe Word. Isn't that the best feeling ever? It is like you're at you're you're like disappointed until they say, "Ah, this one's on us," and then you're like, "Oh, yes." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that happened to me uh, a couple of years ago at Weldworks with Mini Noche. Really? They put a, a keg of it back on tap, and I was like, oh, man, everybody's ready. I think you went that weekend, had a pour of it. Yeah. You're like, you have to get over there and try it. So I got over there. I'm like, all right, I'm going to try it. She's pouring. I mean, she gets to, like, close to that line, and it just blows. Yeah. And so it shoots a little bit of foam, so it can't. she can't really figure how much is in there. And she's like, looks at the guy, and she, he's like, that's our last keg. And she goes, oh, well, here you go, on us. And I'm yeah. like. Sweet. That's yeah. like a full pour right there. That's exactly what happened to Cerebral. I basically got, I mean, it was a full pour. It had a lot of foam on the top. So I went ahead and ordered um, the um, uh, the coffee one, Forever Awake. Mm-hmm. And I went ahead and ordered one of those because I figured, all right, it's been a couple months since JBF. The coffee's probably settled out of it a little bit. Yeah. I want to give it a try. And uh, one of the brewers was standing there, and he was like, he was like, you need to order this because that's what I'm drinking right now. He's like, I think it's the best I've tasted it. So when the brewer is telling you that, you you would just order it. Yeah. You don't ask questions. And um, so I, I ended up ordering a Forever Awake, and I thought, well, this is perfect. I'll enjoy the Forever Awake and let the uh, barrel-aged safe word just kind of sit there while I finish off. And, of course, by the time all the foam settled, it ended up being a full pour. So I, I really made out on that deal. So Nice. Yeah, it's one of those things you just, you're like, yeah, all right, this is my day. It's always good when, after you do that, the next guy that comes in orders that same beer and they go, oh, sorry, he has the last that one. That guy just got the last and one. And then you flip him off while you're drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> I've only done that once and that guy really pissed the guy off. <laughs> he was not happy. Yeah, he was really happy. So I, I was like, sorry, dude, I'm just, I'm messing with you. So I gave him like a little taster and put it in a little taster glass, gave him to him. He's like, oh, thanks, buddy. Oh, that was He's nice like, of you. you. You got quite a bit. I'm like, yeah, I gave you a taste. <laughs> <laughs> As I flipped him off again. <laughs> yeah, that's much nicer than me. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have gone that far <laughs> at all. Oh yeah, but, and I do a crappier podcast. You wanna listen? <laughs> so yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean it was good to just go down to Denver, do something a little different, check yeah. out Cerebral and uh congratulate them on their third anniversary and drink some they had a lot of really good IPAs on tap. They had a lot of really good blondes, Belgian blondes on tap. Really everything that I tried that day was uh, was excellent as always. Nice. From Cerebral. So, um, yeah, that was. I mean, that was a good excuse to get out of town a little bit and go try something that I normally wouldn't have ventured all that way just for one brewery. Yeah, but it I seemed mean, like I, a good enough occasion. Three years, like if like when you said that, I was like, really? They've been only open for three years. I thought the exact same thing. I was like, really? That, but they, I mean, they opened. The same year as as Weldworks, yeah. And I remember going to Cerebral shortly after, um, after I you know after going to Weldworks and was like, oh well, these two are going to do really good things. <laughs> like these two breweries <laughs> are going to do really good things. So I I uh, I, it's it's good to see. I mean it's, and it's it's doing a lot for that kind of area of Denver too. Because I did stop by Fiction, too, while I was there, by the way. Oh, yes. Happy Festivus, buddy. Nice. Here's your holiday gift. As I hold this beer, I'm going to let you know my grievances. <laughs> <laughs> so, we should do a Festivus beer share. <laughs> that would be great. Where if that, you're gonna That's pop what open, we should call it, yeah. If you pop open somebody's beer, you have to, whosoever beer you're about to pop open... You have to let your grievances out about them. <laughs> about the person or <laughs> the beer? About the person <laughs> of beer you're opening. So I if love you have, it. I if love you it. have a, a really bad issue with somebody, you're going for their beer right away. That is the... Uh, <laughs> otherwise, they have to do the uh, feats of strength. Oh, yeah. And oh, try to get the beer out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so that uh, is a um, barrel-aged barley ooh. wine from Fiction. That, uh, um, and it's called uh, Fearless? Uh, face Your Fears. Face Your Fears, yeah. And um, I, so I got to try that while I was at Fiction. And as soon as I, as soon as I took a sip, 
I was like, I got to text Brownie because he's going to love this beer. And uh, and they, they only had like two bottles left, so nice. you're in luck. So, yeah, happy I love it. It's actually, uh, um, well, you you said Friction plays on books, you know. Yeah, yeah. So this one's a play on it. It's a nice, it's actually the front, a nice black and white picture of, it looks like Finch, Fiction's brewery has a nice um, sewer inlet, but a nice red balloon coming, coming out of the it. sewer. Yeah. So yeah. nice uh, on the Stephen King's It book. So I, actually, that's really cool. I might, um, after I have this bottle, is try to get that label off. That's a really cool label. Yeah. I mean, I haven't done that in years where I was like, you remember when we first started doing craft beer and we'd like, oh my God, this label is so freaking cool and want to like Take keep every it. Yeah. 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 So. My trash can is covered in labels that I love. <laughs> yeah. I, I peel them off and, and then put them on your trash put them on can. My trash can. <laughs> <laughs> That's why your trash company doesn't know which one, like, oh, is that one of ours? Is, or the, is that, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> it, it green. It looked green. It, it's look, it looks like there's some green underneath there. So uh, I'm going to, we are going to do, our next episode is going to be about maybe beer boxes. We're yeah, the, yeah, the next episode. Uh, so we did a trading event with our Hopheads and Beer Geeks and a few uh, from outside of the Hopheads and Beer Geeks um, patron page. And um, basically what we did is we did a uh, kind of a blind um, beer mail where and it was kind of a chain mail type thing where we basically we shipped you a box and you filled it up and sent it to the next guy and you had no idea who your beer was coming from or where it was going um all you knew was you're going to get a box full of uh 12 cans and so um i got my box today yeah um and we're gonna do the whole discussion about the box but um, I brought some of the beer over because um, all of them are from the same brewery, uh, Turning Point Beer. And from one of our patrons. Yep, from yeah. Robert Keplinger. So you get to pick what beer. I put, I put the labels toward me, so you get to pick what beer. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to go door number three. Okay. Mantra. Mantra. All right. So Mantra is, uh, so these are all Turning Point um, Beer Companies beers uh from bedford texas and mantra is an oat cream double ipa with idaho seven hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> my favorite hop uh vic secret and you cannot loop and powder um i'm gonna warn you buddy oat cream double ipa sounds like a uh, a lactose infused IPA. no i looked it up and they did not say anything about that well there's gonna be a really quick way once I start burping and farting, <laughs> and maybe pooping my pants. I would take a small pour because based on what I'm seeing here, it looks yeah. like there's some lactose in there, maybe. See, and it, that's the whole thing. They're supposed to start putting it that on the label. They really should, and I, it might be on there somewhere. I just I didn't look at the side of the label. And when I read the thing, nothing. It smells sweet. It smells a slightly... I don't know. I mean, usually I get like a real sweet aroma from lactose. How many of y'all was planning on jamming tonight? We're gonna rock it just right. Ooh, yeah. We jamming. I wanna jam it with you. Oh, yeah, we jamming. And I hope you like jamming too. Oh, oh. I wanna jam it with you, yeah, yeah, we jam it, all right. And I hope you like jamming too. Yeah, no rules, ain't no bounds, we can do it anyhow. I and I will see you through. Every day we pay the price with a little sacrifice. Jam it till the jam is through, eh, hey, hey, we jam it. To think that jamming was a thing of the past. Yeah, yeah. Kinky Reggae 
Just got off the phone with Turning Point Brewery. Come to find out, yes, there's lactose in that beer. Yes, so poopies for you if you drink it. I'm not going <laughs> to drink it. So I popped open um, the double dry hop, the Dallas with a dollar sign, like there's any money in Dallas, because um, it has Eldorado, Helicher Blanc, and HBC 431 hops. So that's what I'm going to be drinking. <laughs> So I don't poop my pants. <laughs> well, the mantra is really good, and we appreciate it. I, uh, I'm not going to go into grave detail because it's just going to anger the brown guy. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I, I like. I really enjoy this beer. It's a. Uh, it's a. It's a great beer. And Turning Point, having just opened spring of this year. Yep. It, uh, I mean, <laughs> already already canning some good beers. So when I went to go find uh, information, um, when we're on the break and we pick what beer we're going to drink next, um, Matt grabbed it and said. It was a cream ale. And I was like, oh, got to figure it out. We have to know. Yeah. So while he was uh, using the potty, I was looking on their website, and their website is just says Turning Point Beer, opening early spring 2018. That's it. No information about the beer. <laughs> so, so I went to their Facebook page, got their phone number, and decided to give them a call. And their their untapped doesn't say anything either. Yeah, their untapped yeah. just says it's a cream ale. There's it doesn't say anything about lactose. So, hey, they're out uh, stuff you know out there to breweries. If you're gonna put lactose in your beer, please just state it. You know, it saves me time at the bathroom. You know, there's sometimes I don't want to shit my pants. There's times I do. <laughs> but there's most of the time I don't want to. I don't think there's ever a time I want to shit my pants. No, there's never a time I want to shit my <laughs> there's pants. There's never a good time to shit your pants. <laughs> but I found that out. So, <laughs> so just, uh, you know, just if you could put it on there, it's not going to, you know, make me stop from buying the beer. I may try something else, but at least give me a heads up. I won't buy that beer, but I will try something else. And to that point, Robert, you should know better. Yep. You are a patron. You should know that lactose gives Jake the poopies. Bad Robert. <laughs> Maybe he did it on purpose. He was like, holy crap, I found a beer that doesn't say it has lactose in it, but it doesn't say it. He's totally going to shit his pants on the air. I've always wanted to hear Jake shit his pants on the air. <laughs> no, he goes, because that would be a good time for you to shit your pants is when you're on the air. No, it's not, Robert. No. <laughs> no, it's not. So one of these things, that, you know, we're drinking a bunch of different um, IPAs that we're going to try uh, here. One of the things I've been trying with my IPAs, I actually want to talk to you at the last episode, and I forgot about it. I didn't make a note, but I did make a note for this episode Ooh. since we're coming out with Thanksgiving, is a lot of my hazy IPAs, I have been flipping over and keeping them tab side down in my uh, beer fridge before I go ahead and drink them. To give them the little extra haze when you go to pour them? Yeah, because there's so many times you pour out, and then you get to the end, and they get that big clump of you know, hops, and Sometimes and clump, yeast, sometimes, yeah. Yeah. and it kind of just you know, and it makes your sometimes it makes your beer foam. I've noticed um, some say please roll, you know, on the label before you pop it open. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to store these upside down, and then as I go to get you know drink them, I put them on the counter, I flip them, and I put them on the counter. Wait, you know, go to the bathroom or go upstairs and go get the glass or whatever I'm doing. And then pop them up and drink them. And I seem they taste a lot better. I've done that with a couple juicy bits and a couple different beers from, well, just to test it out where I've had one beer just sitting regular. And I flipped one over and drink those back to back. And you could really get more hop flavor from it, from having it flipped over. I thought that was, hmm. I was like, hey, you know what? Now, now when I'm bringing, you know, IPAs home, what I'm doing is I'm popping them off the tab and I'm flipping them over and putting them in my fridge. And my wife was like, what the hell are all these beers doing upside <laughs> down in your beer fridge? So they're from the other world. <laughs> and now, but also now she knows that they're all IPAs, not to drink them. Yeah, because she has made that mistake before. Of she saw a coffee on uh, an I, on a label and went and popped open the beer. It happened to be a, 
a milkshake coffee IPA that I was going to trade somebody for, you know. Oh, yeah. And end up, she loved it. I don't know why. She It was a coffee milkshake IPA from Wild, and she loved the beer that I actually had to go back and buy more for her. <laughs> but she is like, okay, so anything that's flipped upside down is an IPA. So it's like, yeah. So I've been try, doing, trying that out, and it's actually worked out pretty well. So I was seeing out there to the, the, the Hotbeds and Beer Geeks, have you tried anything different with your juicy IPAs to get a little bit more flavor from them? Yeah, get on the Hotbeds and Beer Geeks page and let us know because I – um. I personally just I just leave that last little bit there. I don't I I always know that if I'm drinking a hazy IPA, basically like where the label is, the sticker, you know, that little silver part at the bottom of the label, that's mm-hmm. about where I'm going to stop pouring and I'm going to leave that in the can. I it, but I'm sure that it does bring out a few extra aromas. That's not always hops that you're seeing in there. A lot I of know, times it's yeast, yeast sediment. Yeah. Sometimes it's just just protein from the, you know, from the um, grain bill, but it does add some extra aroma and body to the to the beer that I I think probably is intended to be there. So that's an interesting interesting uh, concept that I never thought of. Yeah. But I know that a lot of places do tell you to roll it. Yeah, for you. yeah. There was a couple beers I got from Scott that actually said like roll and actually said roll on my belly before opening, <laughs> and I'm like. Wait, on my belly? <laughs> like, my belly? Am I supposed belly? to get the beer and just roll it on my belly? <laughs> like, or you mean, oh, on the, the beer's belly. Like, so yeah. um, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to try this. And I just tried it. It happened to be with like a Juicy Bits. And then uh, like one of their Devil Dry Hop beers, I did the same thing. I put one straight, one back. And then it was just, you know, a two beer night. Those are the two beers I'm going to drink. And the, I started off with the first beer straight up. And I was like, all right, yeah. Th- I mean, I remember this being really juicy in the tap room. And then the second beer, it just had a lot more flavor. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know what? That's I went back in there and flipping and started flipping cans over. <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. I'm going to do this now. This, I'm is, gonna, this is how I'm going to go. This is the, how I'm going to roll. This is my new thing. <laughs> <laughs> People are going to open my beer fridge and say, hey, what can I drink? Why are there cans upside down? <laughs> is this a joke? If I'm going to pull that up and the beer's just going to fly right out. <laughs> right. All right. Well, um, it's holiday time, and I think people are probably getting in the holiday mood. And me, I'm just thinking about all the beers that I'm going to drink during the holidays and the food that I'm going to eat. So you're you're talking from Thanksgiving to New Year's? That's the holiday time. That's holiday time. That's holiday time. Man. Now, usually people put holiday time as Christmas to, or from Thanksgiving to Christmas. I, and then they take a little break. I nope, think all the way through straight. the new year, man. All the way through the new year, because you it's have a, to have a celebratory beer on New Year's Eve. If you hadn't had a celebratory beer before New Year's Eve, oh yeah, then yeah, that's true, yeah, oh. or during or after right at, or right at, and then football's all day New Year's Day, yeah. so you got to have beer ready to go. Yeah, exactly. So, well, let's talk about beer, holiday beers, crap beer, and holidays. Go with food. So we got Thanksgiving's right around the corner. We'll probably release this after Thanksgiving. Um, Maybe we'll see. And so, <laughs> what what's what's your go to right now? What's your plan for Thanksgiving? You know, I'm all about. For me, I'm all about lighter beers, not like the stouts or the heavy beers, but high alcohol. Okay. Because if I have to spend time with family, I want to make sure that I'm well lubricated. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody out there that makes a 9% lager, <laughs> Matt is going to drink the I'm shit on out of it. I'm on it. I, you know, I, I usually lean towards the Belgian styles. Okay. I lean towards like the triples, the bearded guards, like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I lean towards those style of beers because... You know, a good Belgian triple sits somewhere in the, you know, 7 to 11% yeah. range. And uh, lighter body, lots of flavor. You know, it's like slipping on a glass of wine. Oh, yeah. And uh, so that's kind of where I where I usually land. One of my favorites to, um, to always look for around this time of year uh, is made by Allagash. And they have a bourbon barrel-aged... Uh, triple that they release every year, and the name <laughs> I can never pronounce the name of it. It's um, 
It's like Kiru or Kiru. It's French name translates from French to English for curious. And it's a, um, it's, it's not a huge beer. It's not, you know, it's sits in the, like the 7% range, but it's just nice and light and has lots of flavor and is great to sip on while, you know, having your dinner or even before dinner. So, um, that one's one of my favorites and it's, um, it's spelled C U R I E U X, I think. <laughs> so the funny thing was, I w- I did a little bit of research. Yeah. And there was three different websites that recommended that beer for a holiday. I mean, that sounds familiar. Why have I heard that before? <laughs> I've never had the beer. Like once I saw it, I'm like, I really want to have that beer. Yeah, I search it out pretty much every year, and you can actually find it. I mean, Allagash distributes fairly widely. Um, so you can usually find it or at least get hold of somebody that find that, that can get it for you. And, um, I have a friend that, that every year he sends me one cause he just, he knows that, that it's yeah. a beer that I love. And, uh, that one's one that I, I always get really excited about and being aged in bourbon barrels, it has like a really great, uh, kind of, you know, vanilla oaky characteristic to it mm-hmm. that just, Lends well to a Thanksgiving dinner. Nice. And then, um, you know, there's, there's, then of course you can go like down the row of, um, you know, the actual Belgian triples, really good Belgian triples right off the shelf at your local liquor store and, and have a really great lighter beer with lots of flavor, but with a nice hell, nice higher alcohol content. To uh, to kind of boost your mood a little bit. Yeah, this uh, one of this website because I saved um, a couple different websites and I just popped it open. This one actually recommended that, that Allagash beer is um, to save for like a ho- uh, like a holiday party, like a Christmas party that yeah. you're having a company Christmas party, and to swap out the champagne with this because the feel of it is um, just with coconuts. It's not going to replace the champagne, but it's going to be. Um, light, but it's going to have a heavy alcohol, so it's going to be more of a shared beer. Yeah. Where for you, it's not. You really want all 11% <laughs> alcohol to no, yourself. No, I don't, I don't mind sharing <laughs> it, but it is kind of effervescent. It's got yeah. usually a lot of carbonation to it. Um, I don't know if they still bottle condition it. They used to bottle condition it and cork and cage it. Um, last year when I got one, it was cork and caged. But I don't think it was bottle conditioned because okay. it wasn't um, it wasn't as carbonated and kind of effervescent as it normally is. Um, but um, there's another one that's um, uh, from Van Steinberg Steinberg um, in Belgium. That one's another like eleven percent um, go to triple that you can find in a lot of liquor stores here um, nationally because it's fairly widely distributed um, in some of your larger liquor stores. So Sweet. Those are, those are my favorites. That's usually my go-to whenever it comes to holiday, Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's my, it's my favorite style of beer, hands down. Um, and it's it just fits because it's not heavy, but it's got a nice nice punch to it. Nice. Yeah. Now, for me, I usually have a pretty much full day of beer drinking, so I usually start off pretty light. And this year, um, I pre-planned. So when I was down in Pueblo this last weekend, um, I bought a nice good 12-pack of 16-ounce cans of uh, 805 from Firestone Walker. They're Belgian blonde. It's like 4.7%. But that's going to be my start-off drink, you know, just to... uh, you know, pre-dinner, kind of hang out, watching football, hanging out with the family kind of thing. Um, nothing too heavy for me, but just to start off the pre-dinner drink. Um, so that's, I decided, to, usually I go with a, a little bit lighter lager. I was going to go with the cold one this this year, but it just happened that, you know what, um, they didn't have any down in Pueblo. I decided to go with 805. Nice. nice. So... Uh, I usually try to keep a, a, a either an, a nice blonde or a lager for pregame um, uh, before we go into the food uh, 
portions of the actual Thanksgiving um, right. or even any kind of holiday meal. I may go back to that, but I'm thinking Christmas, uh, since my parents are going to come up here, um, I'm going to probably focus on trying to get a 30-pack of the cold one. Right on. Yeah, that'll be a good one because, I mean, nice light beer. You can serve it to your Bud Light drinking family, oh, yeah. and, and they'll they'll get introduced to a little bit of craft yeah. beer. And do those things go down really easy? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, so I was kept going back when I was at the beer festival. The eight oh five was like my cl- palate cleanser, right? And the guy was knew what I was going there for. Yeah, and every time, like he like, dude, we have Merlin barrel I was like, well, I had it. He's like, but we have this. I was like, dude, is there anything here I haven't had? He goes, no. I was like, eight oh five. And he's like, okay. And eventually he just got the point that he would just fill out my glass because I was using it as a palate cleanser between different beers. If I had something really sour or didn't taste wrong, I was using it going back, just kind of clear everything out um, because I knew water wouldn't do it. I knew water would kind of keep that lingering taste back there, but that seemed to clear the whole palate. So it'll probably work well with that pre, like the snack food, like the cheeses and the carrots and the, you know, the stuff that you're, you get out and you're kind of finger food before, you know, every, all the other meals come out there. Yeah. So. Yeah. So do you find yourself, you know, after dinner and you got your dessert, do you lean towards the stouts and the coffee beers and the, the heavier beers? Or by that time, are you just full and you don't want any more beer at all? No, usually um, if so for pregame, it's always 805. When I come to the actual meal, I go towards an IPA. I don't know why. I have to have an IPA ready and set to go. And this year, and I... I I don't know if it's tradition if you do it two years in a row. Uh, I think that what is what makes it a tradition. It's, so that's once definition. it happens uh, twice, it's that's definition. That's of a tradition. tradition. So yeah. I just started my new t- tradition. Is I went and got the today IPA, the November today IPA from Odell's, and last year I did the same thing. I went and got it, and I had it with my Thanksgiving Day dinner. Nice. That's what I'm doing this year. So it's tradition. So if they stop it's official. doing, it's officially if they tradition. stop doing the Jones. today IPA, I have to go to Odell's being like, "You're breaking my tradition." <laughs> <laughs> so can you make an IPA for me today so I can have it for my Thanksgiving? You can write a strongly worded letter <laughs> explaining to them the tradition aspect <laughs> have, of this. Oh, I may have Jones with letterhead from Jones <laughs> Department <of> MF Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Sincerely, MF Sincerely. Jones. <laughs> so. But so I don't know why, but I, as we did talk before, you know, a Hispanic family, we have a, a lot of the spicier food and IPAs always go well with it. Yes. So, IPAs do well with spicy food. So I, Absolutely. I, so that's why I wanted to go ahead and get that. Say it's not exactly the same beer. This year has a whole different, like I was talking to the guy, oh, they did experimental hops at the last one last year. This year has another set of experimental hops. So um, I'm really looking forward to trying it out. So, um, and then I usually, after dinner, I don't go. Do you go dinner and then dessert? Or do you... I take a break right there. I usually go dinner and then bourbon. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm usually like diving right into the bourbon immediately after dinner. Mainly because I still... Again, with family and wanting to imbibe a little extra, uh, and okay. uh, but I just really want to not be as full, and I feel like that uh, bourbon kind of helps me digest a little bit. Okay, but you're not doing bourbon with dessert. You're bourbon, not usually, and then dessert. Usually, dessert is like later at night, like okay. when yeah. I'm when I'm like. About to go to bed, but I'm still, I'm like, ah, I'm a little munchy. See, the family pushes it on. Like, they're usually, like, dinner. And then as people are, like, it looks like people are finishing up, my aunt is throwing out desserts. Like, it's going out of style. Like, it was like, hold off, wait, man, I just filled up. Let's decompress, let the kids play a little bit. And yeah. usually around that time, I go back to, like, a, you know, a lager or something like that. And or I even go to like water, like just to kind of <laughs> clear everything out, man. I'm gonna edit that out. I can't have that. <laughs> Fine. Just one, one glass of water is always good for you. 
I, it's you true. Go I guess back. you do need to hydrate occasionally. So I usually get, but most of the time, see, if we're going out of town and, and we're not staying at the place where we're eating at, I'm usually the driver. So if I want to have my half a glass of my barrel aged out with my dessert that I always have, I have to drink that water so I keep myself balanced so I could get the family home. Okay. All right. Well, I guess that makes sense. I uh yeah I'm yeah I'm all about the the nice little sipping on some bourbon and relaxing nice. just uh watching the games listening to the family yap and yeah. play card games and stuff like that so um yeah usually after dinner I'm done with the beer I got I'm going to be honest like by the time I by the time dinner's over I'm done with beer like I don't I don't even usually crack anything open after after dinner yeah, Except for a bottle of bourbon. I usually go to a BA stout, you know, something on the heavier side, 11%. I'll share it with the family. I, I won't drink the whole thing. Um, so, and I love to pair it. I try to do the best to do like a a, a, a chocolate cake or, you know, um, my cousin one year made like a vanilla bean chocolate cake that went really, really well with Bourbon County. Nice. Like it was like, oh, man, you had to... We went to a couple of those dinners where they were telling you, like, you put a spoonful of food and you eat it, and then you drink a little bit and you swish it around. And then this time, swish around the beer and then put the food in, like, right towards after you swallow. Dude, that went, like, spot on with it. So, right. Um, but usually it's uh, my mom will have, like, a pumpkin pie or something like that. And um, I've tried to do a pumpkin beer with pumpkin pie. It just does not It's mesh too much well. pumpkin, man. That's way too much pumpkin. <laughs> I've always tried to balance it out. I, um, I'm always looking for a really good rum barrel aged beer to eat with a pumpkin pie. Yeah, I just haven't found one yet. Um, dude, Funkworks always has a rum barrel aged deceit. Which oh, is, really? Yeah, you can usually find it around end of September, beginning of October. Um, if not, they'll they'll do one early in the year too. But rum barrel aged deceit is. That's one of my favorite rum barrel aged beers. It is got all of the characteristics of a nice rum barrel with the the heavy vanilla, the heavy char, um, with the the nice sweetness from the rum. Always a great beer, always great beer. And Funkworks, I don't know if they distribute a lot of their um, barrel aged beers as as far as they distribute all the other beers. I don't think they really do. It's more kind of a local thing. Yeah, but if you're lucky enough to, you know, find one that's, that's distributed in your area, you definitely have to check out their Rum Barrel Age Deceits because I have a whole, I mean, every year I buy one and I usually buy three so that I can keep at least like a three-year kind of flight going and, and keep that up. And uh, that one, again, one of my favorite rum barrel aged beers. Nice. So, uh, a few of the folks on our web, on our Facebook page, and our Hopheads and Beer Geeks page. Basically, I asked, uh, "What beer or beer style would you have at the table for Thanksgiving?" Alex Healing uh, kind of agreed with you. He said hazy IPAs, a big stout, probably barrel aged, which for me that's a little too much for a uh, a holiday dinner. And a funky sour. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what that guy's talking about. <laughs> but he looks like he's also going with you. He also talked about just doing a straight bourbon. Yeah, nice whiskey or rye or a weeded bourbon. Um, and I'm I'm with you, Alex. I agree. I think a uh, I think a nice whiskey or rye to finish off is uh, is the way to go. And a friend of the show, Matthew Leiby, um, he says he's having a Moo Duck brewing carrot cake for dessert. And he's sent me some Moo Duck uh, brewing beers, and they're all delicious. So I'm guessing that the carrot cake is probably a good dessert beer. And then Wade's got to be a dick and send an emoji of a dancing pumpkin, which is just rude. And um, Wade, you are officially banned from the uh, Facebook page. <laughs> or that, that's what he's going to wear for Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. Zach Anderson, uh, he works over at Loveland Ale Works. He says, give me a high ABV Belgian triple. Or strong ale. Or strong ale. And that's the guy that I agree with right there. I think Zach is a very smart guy. Um, but something that he can enjoy and people won't want to steal from me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you to all of you who are members of the Hopheads and Beer Geeks patrons only Facebook group. And those of you who like our Facebook page, Hopheads Guide to the Galaxy, we love hearing all of the things that you guys are going to be drinking for the holidays. This is Nick Armitage with Beards by Nick and Weldworks, and you're listening to Hophead's Guide to the Galaxy podcast. There are two amazing beards here, and one in progress. the day after Thanksgiving comes the one day that all shoppers go looking for and has started trending towards the craft beer lover yes. is Black Friday. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be that Black Friday was always known for going out and trying to get the best deal on a TV or dishwasher or toaster or whatever you can. Now it's going... Oh man, blah, blah, Bourbon blah. County. Gotta get my oh. Bourbon County. <laughs> I think it's going away from Bourbon County. I think people are leaving Bourbon County on the shelves, thinking, hey, we could pick that up later. They're going to Liquid Mechanics because they're doing their small batch release. They're going to Something Brewery because they're doing their small. Every brewery seems nowadays that they are doing a Black Friday release. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you have to right now because if you're not, you're missing out on where people are just like, you know what? Let's go and do shopping here, but let's go to this brewery. And if that brewery's not doing a release, people are like, wait, 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 no, no, no. Let's go to this brewery because they're releasing the special beer. Yeah. And I think for, for beer traders, it's a like a beer trader's gold mine. Oh, yeah. Because you grab the, the one that's close. You grab the popular beer that's closest to you. Yeah. And you snag your limit. And now you have trade bait for the other beers that you want to try and influence oh, yeah. and, and get for yourself. And so it works out well because you don't necessarily have to try and hit every single release. You just try to grab enough extra or grab your limit so you can make the trades for the ones that you really want. And uh, But you're right. It's There's a lot of, a lot of breweries that are all about the, the Black Friday releases. And I... I don't know. I'm I'm excited about the Liquid Mechanics release yep. that's that's coming out. Um, I'm also Out thirteen. Out thirteen has a great one, um, and also I, I mean Wiley Roots is releasing one that they released in the past. It's not necessarily like a limited edition release, but with um, Cinnamonsta and um, Mean Beans. It's you know those are beers that they don't make very often, so they're it's it's exciting to see those beers. I've said it before, but Mean Beans is the probably the only coffee stout that I will endorse as a <laughs> Hophead's Guide approved <laughs> coffee stout because I, well, the first time I tried that, I was a little leery of it, but it's a you know it's a it's a chocolate coffee stout. And to me, it's a lot heavier on the chocolate, which makes it more of like a, a mocha or, um, you know, like a, it gives it this interesting characteristic and this interesting body yeah. that I normally would not like. But I, I really enjoy um, uh, Mean Beans. That one's one that, and as it ages, it just gets even better. Yeah. And I mean, we talk about the, so last year I did Wibby's release of, um, the double dunkle yeah, barrel yeah. age, and then went to Liquid Mechanics and got their release, and then went to something brilliant and got there. Some uh, so I'm going to be in Southern Colorado, so I can't hit up any of those this year. Right. Um, 
So it's going to be kind of a different thing because I was talking to um, the Walters down there and they do a great green chili beer, which I'm going to bring some up for the show next time. Nice. Um, but I was like, hey, man, you guys doing anything for, special for Black Friday? And the guy goes, well, we're going to be open. <laughs> Okay, that I was, was like, well, that's that's good. Aren't you open every day? What's so special about that? So, um, I kind of got on him a little bit, and he's like, "Well, we were we were thinking about releasing something, but we don't think it's going to be ready yet." It's like, hey, that's honest. That's honest feedback right there. Yeah, you know, if you, if you don't think the beer's ready, you could hold off on it. But um, I was talking to the guy down there at Brews, and they're going to try to do a special release. He's hoping he. Um, He's going to check it on Tuesday. If it's ready to go, they're going to bottle on Wednesday to have it ready for Friday. That's good. So um, it's, that's what I like about that little brewery, uh, that beer festival. The local guys are there. There's no volunteers pouring the beer, so you got to actually get talked to a couple people. Um, what brews did have, I'm going to grab a growler of and bring back up, is they did an Oak Age Double IPA. That was phenomenal. I really want to share with that with you. Like I was tasting, I was like, so he's like, yeah, we, we decided to go for it. We got this fresh oak barrel. And the guy was like, what should we throw in the stout or triple or something? And the guy was like, no, let's throw, let's make a double IPA. And he was like, what? Nobody does that. He's like, yeah, that's what I mean. Let's nobody does it. Let's go for it. Right. And yeah, it, it came yeah. out really good. So, um, you know, and then we have the holidays, you get over Thanksgiving, you have black Friday, Got to get some shopping done. I or, guess, uh, yeah. While you're going and getting <laughs> some shopping done, you stop and have a beer here and there. Yeah, yeah. And you have to deal with the out-of-towners, the visitors. Yeah, there's going, always those. Going to, oh, hey, look, you guys make beer here? That's awesome. <laughs> they should have one of these in my town. <laughs> so that's the only one thing I hate about um, holiday beers right now but so purpose brewing is doing um like private tours on black friday really yeah so which is actually kind of i mean if you're a guy from out of town it's not going to be that big a deal yeah it's 40 bucks but you get like a you know you get tasters and pairings like cheese and uh, food pairings along the way and it's um if you're just like you were saying, just a guy from out of town to stop by purpose yeah. and you dropped 40 bucks, you would be like, okay, well, why did I pay $40 for this tour? But if you're local and you realize that it's Peter Bucard that's giving you the tour and you're getting to taste beers directly out of the barrels from, you know, his creations yeah. and, and learning how he would pair it with this cheese or this bread or, you know, however he decides to do it. That actually is kind of an exciting deal for a beer geek. Yeah. And, I mean, at 40 bucks, to me, that's kind of worth it. Like, yeah, that's, that's like a good drop in the bucket. But, yeah, I mean, it is it is that one because they don't do this all the time. No, they don't. And if you were to go, I mean, if you go to Purpose, you're going to drop 40 bucks anyway. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's something that, that uh, might be for the you know the beer curious, not the best idea, but for the the beer geek in Fort Collins or in the Northern Colorado area, shit man, it might jump be on well that. Worth it. Yeah, that's actually I didn't hear that they were doing that, but that's a good idea. That's, yeah, you're doing something different. You're not doing another beer release like pretty much everybody's doing. Yeah, I mean it's basically an you're afternoon gonna... with Peter Bucard yeah. and. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be pulling some na nails out of these limited barrels oh, yeah. because they don't make the same beer twice. Mm -hmm. Every beer that they make is 100% original. And so, I mean, you're getting to taste different levels of beers and maybe get to taste beers at a at a time or a place in their, you know, their development that only Peter Bucard and the brewer gets to gets to oh, taste. Yeah. So, That's which cool. is kind of neat. I might do that when I open a brewery, just private tours on Black Friday. Yeah. And just me hammered and hungover from <laughs> Thanksgiving. You get to hang out with me. Me, I want to show you the brewery. Here it is. <laughs> get the fuck out of my brewery. <laughs> Cost is one burrito. You have to <laughs> one bring me one burrito. Who brought me my burrito? All right. Thank you, guys. Anyway, we guys run so much from college football. <laughs> 
Yeah, so uh, one of those fun things you always do is the the gift of giving. Um, so one of the things you can do for your craft beer, uh, your beer geek or your hop head is an advent beer calendar. Yeah. Um, I already did yours. That You got one in your advent beer calendar. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's like actually counts as two because it's 22 uh, it's, it's ounce a one, one day of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> one day. So I'll, I'll, I'll pop this open. <laughs> On the one day, day of Christmas. Day of Christmas. <laughs> Reaper gave to me. <laughs> Face your fears. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, okay, scary. <laughs> but it's Christmas. It's so, jolly. So there's different. It's got a red balloon. <laughs> there's different things you could do for your craft. So one of those is the the advent calendar. There's a couple. The, the craft beer seller used to do an actual. They used to sell one. Um, they're no longer open. I don't see anybody else really doing one. So if you ever want to uh, do one as a gift, it's really not that hard. There's Pringle cans involved. Sometimes it's. <laughs> I've seen elaborate ones. The easiest one is actually just going and going to your hardware store and having cut out piping, and gluing it together and making it into a nice little tree for yeah. you. And they show you how online at Pinterest and um, Nikki showed me a couple different ones. One thing I thought was if you have a a, a craft beer buddy or your BTF. Um, I would say I, I might do this for one of my BTFs. Uh, maybe they don't know which one, but I'm thinking I'm going to get 12 cans, wrap them up, and just mark them one through 12, and they have a nice 12 days of Christmas. Yeah, that's that's probably the simplest, uh, yeah. you know, guy way of doing it <laughs> if you don't want to be creative. But if you do want to be creative, there's plenty of ideas oh, out yeah. there. And, and I I've, I think those are great ideas. Um it's it, but kind of like what we were talking about. Um, it could be hard to get, you know. I mean, if you're you're talking about that craft beer lover finding a beer that they haven't had, or you know, it, or would be excited about. But at the same time, if you are slowly collecting beers throughout the year, oh yeah, and you throw some in there that either maybe they hadn't tried or they had already drank all of their stash. That would be exciting yeah. to them. Yeah, you got to go a little bit out of the realm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that, or I maybe throw would... one ever out of your trades. You know, throughout the year, you know, just like just tuck one of those in there. So, the, but always there's a plenty of other gifts out there for the craft beer lover. Yeah, yeah. There's, I mean, so one of the ones that I think would be excellent for um, a guy that, or a gal that is. Uh, really into craft beer would just be like a gift card for Tavor. Yeah. Um, you know, websites like Tavor, you can, you can just simply buy a gift card for, or you can actually buy a pack of, they call it like the beer geek pack. And they literally like hand pick the beers and send it to them. So you don't even have to think about it. So if you're someone that isn't really into craft beer and you don't know that much, well, you just order the Beer Geek pack and they can send it your way. Or a gift card for someplace like Tavor that they can go and they can get the beers that they love. Uh, other stuff is just beer guard, man. Hats, shirts. You know, if the guy listens to a, a favorite podcast, maybe they could, they you know, have shirts and hats on there or glassware. Think about it, people. Yeah, um, a nice uh, Hophead's Guide to the Galaxy Revival Glass would oh, be yeah. great for... For a uh, you know the hot pet of beer geek in your <laughs> life, um, you know you can get a pack of two on our at our store on hopheadsguidetothegalaxy dot com. But um, and so I, I kind of this year was thinking of things that that I would enjoy, things that I would would like to get, and being being like a gol- being a golfer, um, one of the things that I kind of you know when i go out on the golf course i don't get super excited about the pbr bud light course light that they have on special for yeah. the cart girl so i always want to try and bring something a little i i always throw two cans of just like good beer in my bag they make a uh, a product called the um par 6 bag cooler and it's meant to hold a six pack of beer, which, you know, for a 16 ounce can, you might hold four 16 ounce cans. But it's basically just a sleeve, a big tube sleeve mm-hmm. um, 
that you can slide in the large pocket of your golf bag. And it fits perfectly. So when you're going on the golf course, they're not going to know any different of whether or not you got, you know, a, a bag full of beers. And if you're in a cart, no big deal. If you're walking, it's going to be a little heavy. Yeah. You're going to want to drink them a little <laughs> quicker. But, uh, you know, I, I push. I do a push cart. So, you know, an extra, you know, five beers, four or five beers in there isn't going to be a big deal to me. And at least I got, you know, four or five good beers to drink while I'm on the course. That's something that I would want. Um, and, yeah, it's called the the Par 6 uh, Beer Cooler. And it, I've been looking at them the last couple of years. It's something that I would really, really enjoy. But one thing I was going to ask you was there's a lot of really nice growlers on the market. Okay. Right now. However, a lot of breweries are canning beers and crowlering beers. Yeah. We had our episode about... You know, the crowler versus the growler and how the growler is kind of dying off, but also kind of how the crowler is dying off. Yeah. Is that a gift that you would would want or even recommend to somebody is a nice stainless steel pressurized growler that uh, that they could have to, um, you know, to pick up some beer and kind of keep it somewhat fresh for a few days? I want to be. It's going to be based on the area you're living in, like, and the 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 level of beer geek they're at. You know, get to know your beer geek. If you go into their place and they have, and you could open their open their bottom sink under their sink, and they have eight old glass growlers under there, it's probably tend to go away from that, right? Um, but if the guy is really getting into craft beer and it's one of the things I'd say, go ahead and get it. Like when I went to Odell's, I was amazed. I was like, Hey, you guys still fill growlers? And he's like, she was like, yeah, we still fill them. I was like, Oh, okay. Most places have stopped once they got the crowler machine. She's like, yeah, it's really popular, but we'll never stop doing that. She goes, I think we're going to stop selling them, but we're never going to stop filling them. Right. So yeah. I was like, Oh, well, next idea is I have one of the pressurized, the growler works. Um, you know, I got it for my 40th birthday. I've used it maybe four times. Once the actual was just with water to do our bottle share. Um, so that that is one of those gifts like, oh, man, if I was getting into craft, craft beer, like this would have been the perfect gift like three years ago. I would have used the shit out of this thing. Um, right now, I'm starting to know that most breweries have crowler systems, so I'm not too worried about keeping a growler with me. Um now, so if you're getting into that guy that you know that's barely getting into it, yeah, that's probably the perfect gift. I wish that technology was around when I started buying growlers all the time. Right. Because <laughs> so, then it was technology. I know. Now <laughs> it's like, yeah, whatever. Everybody, everybody, everybody pops one open. So, um, But I would probably lean towards maybe like if he's in a comfort bubble, getting him gift cards to breweries around his area that maybe to get him out to try different beer. Yeah. You know, if the guy just talks about New Belgium all the time, get him a freaking gift card to Horse and Dragon to have him go try that out. You know, there's yeah. other different, even down to Denver. Yeah. You know, so um, a lot of those other things are like the 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 passport program. You know, Fort Collins has a passport program. Mm -hmm. I would recommend that for somebody that's, you know, lives in that area that's want to get to know about craft beer. So, um yeah, I don't, I don't know that, that you're on a line right there. Like it always, but you got to think some certain areas don't have crawlers yet. They may just fill growlers. If that's a certain area, like they're like craft breweries are starting up, that's a perfect gift for somebody. Yeah, yeah. So again, kind of along the lines this year of uh, thinking of things that I would enjoy. Um, one of the things that I saw at Great American Beer Festival was a product called Beer Maker. And it's spelled B E E R or B E R B E E R M K R B E E R M K R, and it's um it's a product that was put out by Brew Jacket, uh, the company out of Boulder that makes the Brew Jacket that I use for my home brewing system, and it's essentially like a pico brew type system, yeah. like a, a countertop system that's brew in a bag. Um, it, the kit comes with all the grain you need to make about a three gallon batch for the person who doesn't get to brew, who wants to brew beer, loves brewing beer, but doesn't get to do it on a regular basis or doesn't have time 
to brew a full batch, a system like that is perfect because they get to kind of scratch that itch of brewing beer. It's a system that you can be creative and um, make different recipes with, yet you, you don't have the cleanup or kind of process or heavy process that you would have of a full brew day or even maintaining your fermenters. Because this system basically is an all-in-one. You brew it, ferment it, and serve it all out of the same system. And when I saw that at, at Great American Beer Festival this year, it you know, I'm, I love homebrewing beer, but at the same time, I was kind of like, man, this would be... This would be awesome because I could brew some small batches. Yeah. Get that, you know, get to brew some beer on the weekend that or even day that uh, you know, I want to brew but don't have the time to spend a 6-hour day to brew and still get to be creative. And along with that, you can, you know, buy them a membership to the American Homebrewers Association oh, yeah. and they can, you know, they get it from all sides that way. And, you know, right now they have a, a deal with American Homebrewers Association. It's like 43 bucks. You can buy them a gift card, and they get to pick the book that, uh, that they would like as a gift, as a free gift. And it's basically a membership gift card for, um, for your favorite homebrewer. Nice. And, you know, you, you package that up with a, a really great system like the Beer Maker, um, especially with a system like that that's made right – I mean, if you're a Colorado guy right here in Colorado, um, to me that's a that's a beer lovers kind of like full full package of a great gift. And honestly, it's something that you can benefit from because if they're making good beer, they're gonna share it with you. Oh yeah. And then it's not like the five gallons you really get to have that you're trying somebody likes, but they leave and you're still stuck with five gallons, yeah, 4.77 yeah. gallons of it. So yeah. um, three gallons actually sounds like a really good process. Uh, to go on, though, we need, I'm empty, so I need you to pick a beer. Uh, I'm going to go door number one. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Dingle Bop. Damn it. I was hoping that it was going to be the super yeah. awesome, crazy, uh, fun time beer. Super awesome, beautiful explosion <laughs> show. So, um, another beer from Turning Point is uh, DDH Dingle Hop <laughs> or <laughs> Dingle Bop. Dingle Bop. Um, which is the uh, fourth installment in their Plum Plumbus series. I was going to say Plumbers series, and I was like, what the hell is a Plumbers series? Uh, but so they really like the Vic's, the Vic Secret hops. Um, and it's brewed with Citra, Mosaic, and Vic Secret. So I think this one is going to be a juice bomb. Oh, yeah. So as you, we're talking about those systems, I see a couple of them here and there um, online, Ooh, and I maybe. think I think you're right. I think it's going to be um, those are really good. And actually, for the people that are getting into craft beer, I hopefully that didn't give them a blind eye that they're like, "Oh, that's easy, bro, beer. You just throw all this stuff in, and you hit this button. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got beer. Yeah, it's like why do people think it's so hard? <laughs> you know." <laughs> Well, you know, it's you still have to get the recipe right. You still gotta, you know, you still gotta get all the, all the um, kind of process in, and make sure you get all your temperatures yeah. right. It's, I mean, it's not an automatic thing. Yes, it's automated, but it's not automatic. You're not just gonna yeah. throw every, all the ingredients in and poof, you got beer. You're still gonna be interacting with it a little bit. This uh, Dingle Bop is good. Oh yeah. Oh, that, that's. Look at that. That's like. That looks like the OJ and OE we had yeah. on the 40th. Yeah, this is a... Um, so, Dingle Bop is... Um, this is pretty much the the epitome of what a uh, New England-style IPA is. It is very cloudy, um, opaque, with... Um, it's got a lot of crud in it, man. <laughs> it's got a lot of Dingle oh, yeah. Bops. But and they uh, warned you. It's yeah, on the label. And um, but yeah, and a nice thin white head doesn't really stick around too long. Crazy body, like this thing is, it's a milkshake. I mean, you would think that this would be a milkshake IPA based on the body of it. And uh, but man, it's good beer. I think that Robert did well. Oh yeah, and I have a picture of all the beers 
that he sent me, uh, plus condition of the box. We'll share those and then um, go through the whole boxing adventure of the box that went around the world in 12 days. <laughs> Make sure you go out there and you check out the Hotbed's Guide to the Galaxy on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram. And also, while you're at it, become a patron and become a member of the uh, members only Hotbed's and Beer Geeks patrons group. That's where you get great content like what we're recording today on uh, Jake's fancy eyeball camera. Um, you'll also get to see all of the deleted scenes where uh, I fucked up and basically all the things that you're not going to get to hear on the podcast because they didn't get recorded. And Steve you're, Jobs is a dick. <laughs> you're only going to see them on the uh, super secret Hopheads and Beer Geeks patrons only Facebook page. So for our patrons out there, hi Robert. <laughs> Robert sent us beer and got to be a participant in the uh, Facebook page. So, guys, thanks for joining us. Um, happy holidays. And uh, we'll, we'll be back next, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, with some good information on some shippers, some beer shippers. Oh, yeah. Yeah.